Jessica Beck. Welcome to Honestly English. And today you are going to learn very native phrases for discussing dating and breakups, mostly breakups. <laughs> Um, they're great vocabulary today, you guys. Super modern, super native.、Um, all right, and you know what? Today's vocabulary is closely related to the vocabulary in the blog post from this week. So go to my website and look at this week's blog post. It's seven phrases for being honest in English. So. This is related because sometimes when you're honest with someone, you make a confession to someone that leads to a breakup. So, see synergy, everything comes together. <laughs> I love it. I love it.、Um, okay, guys, remember you can learn more real, honest English. Make 2019 your year of becoming fluent. If you sign up for a four or six month membership on my website. You will get a Christmas bonus. Now, what's a membership? It's exclusive audio lessons and transcripts every Friday. Sign up before December twenty third for a four or six month membership, and you will get a secret link with a secret password,、um, all about the three my three favorite Christmas movies that natives talk about this time of year. Okay, so sign up. Now let's get to the vocabulary.、Um, all right, so the first phrase is splitting up. This just means break up. It's exactly the same as break up, just a phrasal verb to split up. Now the next word, splitsville. Americans love adding like ville and town to words. Like I'm going to Funky Town means like I'm gonna dance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so splitsville is like the process of breaking up and maybe post breakup. Now, breaking up this could mean a marriage, so it can mean divorce or just someone you're dating. All right, so could be used in both situations. So, how do you use splitsville?、Um, you could say like, I think it's splitsville for me and Mike. I just can't date someone who lies to me. That is true.、Um, <laughs> okay, the next phrase is on the rocks. So, if you're having difficulty in your relationship or your marriage, you could say it's on the rocks.、Um, so, you could say like, I think their marriage is on the rocks. I mean, they sleep in separate beds. Eee, that's not a good sign. Oh, it's a good idiom though. Okay,、um, here's a verb. Which means you break up with someone. To dump someone just means you tell them the relationship is over. You dumped them. Okay, ghost to ghost someone.、Um, this is super like modern, guys. Very contemporary term. To ghost someone means that you start ignoring them. Okay. So, for example. Maybe you're on a dating website and like you and this person have been chatting for a week, and then all of a sudden nothing, no messages, no texts, nothing. They ghosted you. Or maybe you had one date with someone and then you never hear from them again. They ghosted you. It's terrible. Like ah,、oh, it's so mean. It's so sad. Okay, this last term, a shoulder to cry on.、Um, a shoulder to cry on is. A person who you tell all of your sad problems to, and you probably cry. So when I was going through my divorce, I needed a lot of shoulders to cry on, and luckily I have a great support network, so I cried to everybody. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this is honestly English, you guys. Again, I'm talking to you like a friend and not a teacher. So yeah, I'm divorced, and I have a son, and that is. Perfectly common in my culture and country. I understand if it is not common in yours, but guys, here's where the history component comes in of today's lesson. Okay, go to my blog post for this、um, for this video lesson. And I will link to an article all about the history of divorce in America with the statistics and everything. Great insight into our culture and country, you guys. Because I don't know if it is where you live, but it's very common here.、Um, okay, so guys, I want you to comment on today's video. Use one of today's phrases, or you could talk about the state of divorce in your culture or country, the attitudes to it. I would love to read those comments and have a discussion, you guys. Now, if you found today's vocabulary helpful, subscribe to this channel and also please share this video on social media, because I promise you today's phrases are not like anything people are learning in classrooms or with other teachers. So, share this honest English lesson, you guys. Okay, let's get to the pop culture R and R. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, there's this show on Amazon Prime called The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I just finished the second season. The first season came out in 2017. It's amazing. It's about a woman in 1950s America named Miriam Maisel or Midge. It's completely fictional, you guys. Um, Okay, so she finds out that her husband Joel was having an affair with his secretary and then Joel leaves her and they have two kids and she has to move in with her parents. But that's that's not what the whole show is about, you guys. That's the background. But Midge, Maisel, Mrs. Maisel, she wants to become a stand-up comedian. And can you imagine in 1950s America, like women didn't do that. So guys, this is amazing. First of all, it's stunningly beautiful. The clothes are gorgeous. Second of all, it's poignant, meaning that the story is touching and strong and lovely. And thirdly, it is hilarious, you guys. She is the smartest, quickest stand-up comedian ever, and she talks about life in a real way, just like a stand-up comedian does. So, find the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. If you can, it's hilarious. Okay, guys, remember to leave a comment on this episode, and I will respond. Also, sign up for a membership, get your Christmas bonus, and finally, share this video. All right, everyone, I hope you're having a um, great holiday season. I know I am, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.